In my last video, I was working on a 2013 Ford Fusion. This vehicle was left abandoned and has been sitting for a while for some major issues. The outside of the car looks okay and it's not in that bad of shape, but the inside is a different story. The smell is unbearable and it's not even the reason the car was left abandoned. It has a transmission issue and it will not move forward. Now before I took this transmission out and started to figure out what was wrong with it, I wanted to make sure I could at least sit in this car and it was bearable enough for me to breathe while pulling the car in the shop or road testing it after I fixed the transmission. So we ripped the seats out, we ripped the carpet out, we let the car air out at least good enough to where I could at least sit down in it, pull it in the shop and get it ready to repair. Now we got this thing in the building and we got to get all the spider webs and cobwebs knocked off the underside of the car and get the transmission out of it, disassemble it and see what's causing it not to move forward. Now this vehicle has a 1.6 liter four cylinder motor paired up to a six speed 6F35 transmission. Now the six speed 6F35 transmission is very problematic in these Fords and they go bad all the time. I've never rebuilt one of these transmissions, but I have rebuilt its ugly cousin that goes in the Chevy to 6T45, and it's essentially the same thing. So let's go ahead and start yanking this thing out, see if we can tear it down and see what's going on with it and see if we can actually fix it. Before I get started, I want you to comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you have a Ford that has this problem or has ever had this problem. And if you have any questions, you can email me at justcallme81 at gmail.com and I'll do the best I can to help you out with your problem. So to get the transmission out, we got to start by getting to where we can actually see the transmission. So first we're going to take the air box off and it's just got a couple clips that hold the top piece off and then some rubber grommets and two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the rest of it on. You can break it loose just like I did there and then there's a couple plastic clips that are holding wires to it and you get all those exposed and now we can see the transmission. So we're going to get the air intake tube out of our way as well and now we're going to work on the battery and sometimes these battery cables can hang up on the terminals. Just get a little screwdriver, pry them loose like a ball joint, and they come right out of there. Now the battery tray is held in by a couple 10 millimeter bolts as well, and it's also connected to some wires via some plastic clips as well. Now we can see the transmission and we can get these bell housing bolts off. Now there's two bell housing bolts up top on this transmission in this model. There's also three starter bolts, and getting to those can be a little difficult. So to get to these starter bolts, there's three starter bolts. Excuse my uh, lighting here, but so there's one starter bolt right there and I just broke it loose and it's kind of hard. I mean, it's it's difficult to get to. So there's one right here and I already took the other one out. I already took the other one out that's up here. There it goes right there. So there's one right there. You kind of just got to get your wrench on it and break it loose any way you can actually got that top one from up top and then came down here and uh, got it loose the rest of the way from the bottom. And once you get it mostly loose, you take a small, take a small ratchet wrench right here and you can ratchet it out of here. And that's what I did on both of those bolts right there to get that starter out. So. There it goes. Watch your fingers. I might have to go back up top to get the starter all the way out. There's a grommet in here. There's a grommet in there that kind of sits down in the crescent of where the starter goes and that's why you got to take that loose to get to your torque converter bolts. That grommet goes right down in that hole and that's where we're going to be getting the torque converter bolts out. Yeah, there's one torque converter bolt. We got four, three left. There we go. 
it'll get it all the way loose. Just leave it on for a couple of threads. And there's our nut. Now there may be a few more things you have to detach like cooler line fittings and maybe some wiring harness plastic connectors. Other than that, you got to get the wheels off and uh, getting around these lug nuts can be a little tough. You beat a socket on and it's good to go. Now we got the axle nuts. We're going to go ahead and get those loose before we raise it up in the air. And we're also going to tackle the ball joint through bolt and get those loose and out of the way before we try to take the frame down. Now getting the ball joints out of the knuckle isn't as easy as it looks and you kind of got to make sure that knuckle is lined up straight so that ball joint kind of drops straight down out of there and it's kind of tough to get out I'll be honest and it took me a little while to do and that's why it's on the first person camera. We're also going to drain the fluid here and the fluid definitely does not look like this is a good transmission obviously and we know that it's not a good transmission but the fluid is telling the tail of the tape right now as you say. And it is pretty burnt up, and we obviously got a huge problem inside this thing. Now we're going to get ready for the frame to come down. We're going to take the sway bar loose and the power steering rack loose, and these bolts are a little stuck. So we got the uh, sway bar end links loose. Got to take those loose to get the frame down. We got the rack tied up. We're going to leave the rack inside the vehicle. Now getting the frame down is a little tricky as always on a vehicle but it is particularly tricky on this model because the frame actually goes up and over the plastic radiator support that Ford made. So we kind of got to drop this thing down a little bit and then we got to pry it back as you see me doing there towards the rear of the vehicle in order for this thing to come completely down. Now once you've got it out of the radiator support it'll come right down but make sure you have somebody to help you or a transmission jack with a board like I do to make sure you don't drop this thing or hurt yourself. Now the frame's out of the way, we got the powertrain exposed, so we gotta get the rest of the stuff attaching it to the car out. We gotta get the axles out, which is mainly the last thing attaching it to the car besides the mount. So this axle was a little stubborn, we had to use the air hammer to get it through the hub. A little rusted in there it happens sometimes on the splines and even once i got it through the hub it still didn't want to come loose so we had to break a pry bar out pry it out of the hub and it comes right out some of these small things can take a little longer than you like but it is what it is and you got to get it done So now we're reaching the final stages of this removal. We're breaking the bell housing bolts loose. And this one's a little tough to get to. As you see, the manifold is in the way. So you kind of got to break it loose, back it out a little bit. You won't get it all the way out. It just sits in the motor while the transmission comes out. Now you also have these two nuts that are bracketed to the transmission and the power steering rack. You got to get those loose to get them out as well. And then we get the rest of the bell housing bolts before we go up top and get the mount bolts out. Now the top mount bolts is something I like to do last once the jack is up in the air. It just kind of makes it easier. You grab a ladder, go hit these four bolts real quick, and the transmission will drop right down with the jack now. Now getting it out this way is just a little bit of prying against the motor and then letting it down a little bit and then prying a little more, getting it a little further back and letting it down a little bit more. And then until you finally get it where it's broken loose and it'll come all the way down, now you always want to make sure you got everything disconnected up top and nothing's hanging you up while you're coming down. So you come down nice and slow. That way if anything is hanging you up, you don't snap it off or break it or you got to pay for it. A little teeny converter. All right, to get this thing disassembled, 13. we're going to start with the side pan and the valve body. And there's 13 millimeter studs on this side pan, and there's about eight of them, and there's a couple eight millimeter bolts on this side pan as well. And once you get it off, it kind of pries off. Some of these are gasketed on, and we're going to be gasketed on when we go back with it, but this one is siliconed on from factory. So it's a little hard to break loose, but once we did, it pops right off, and you see all that nasty fluid coming out. Now there's a bunch of T30 Torx head bolts holding this valve body on and there's one 10 millimeter nut with a stud holding it on as well. 
and there's one speed sensor behind the valve body once you get it out as well. So you take all these bolts loose one at a time, and I usually leave them in the valve body. That way I'm sure exactly where they go back. This valve body will come off in one piece. It won't come off in two pieces like some of those old Fords. And there's a gasketed separator plate sitting behind the valve body, along with a speed sensor that plugs into the front of the valve body that sits behind there. Now this is a Gen 2 6F35, so there's a couple differences in the early models. We'll go through those as we're disassembling this thing. We're going to roll this thing to its back, and we're going to get all the 13 millimeter bolts holding the front cover on. And there's two hiding up at the top of the bell housing. Do not forget those because I almost did and almost broke this case taking it off. The cave halves are siliconed together from factory and are a little hard to pry off so you might need to use a screwdriver and a hammer to get them broken loose. Then two pry bars, get your fingers underneath of it and you can pop it right over. Now the pump sits on the front cover and it's bolted to it with the filter and a ring gear for the planetary and the rest of the transmission housing sits down in there. Now this is the differential and planetary right here with the sun gear that goes inside of it. We're just going to set that to the side, everything's okay with that. And then we have the chain assembly with the two sprockets. It's pretty simple to get those off. They kind of just pull right off. The next you got to get the chain splash shield out of your way. And it's just two 8mm bolts. And then there's also another chain guide. And that's two 8mm bolts as well. Those things pop right out of there. Now once you get those out your way, you got the one, two, three, four clutch in your way now. We got to get the snap ring out of the way and it's pretty stiff. It's pretty hard to get out of there. So you kind of got to work it around with the screwdriver, but eventually you can pop it right out of there. And now we got the one, two, three, four clutch hub and sun gear coming out and then the one, two, three, four clutch, which is a little burnt up. It's got some heat marks on it burnt. and we're going to have to replace these clutches, probably be able to sand up the steels. Now we can start taking the planetaries out of here and this is a six speed with three planetary gear sets and they all kind of just sit right in this one area right in the middle of all the clutch packs. Now this is our center support and low reverse and one, two, three, four clutch pistons and it kind of just pops right out of there. It's not really seated down in there. And then that's our last planetary tied into our low diode. Now our low diode is what the low reverse clutch sits on top of and splines into. It has a one-way clutch in it. And it's a little difficult to get out. If you bring it out and it's not exactly even, it won't come up like that. But if you get it exactly even, it'll slide right out of the case just like that. Now this leaves the last assembly in there, which is the 456 overdrive clutch and the 35 reverse clutch in there, which is basically a direct clutch. And it's that whole assembly down in the bottom. Now we got one piston down here. This is a 2-6 clutch piston. It's kind of like an overrun clutch. And there's a snap ring holding the piston and retainer in. You kind of got to work it around like you did the first snap ring. It's not that hard to get out. You work it around a little bit, it'll come right out of there. And then you can get the piston out of there as well. Now to get the 2-6 piston out, we're using two 90 degree angle picks to get under the lip because it's kind of hard to get under. Now we have this assembly and we got to check the clutches in it. Now the outside is the 3-5 reverse clutch and then the inside is the 4-5-6 overdrive clutch. Now to disassemble this assembly, you have to get the input shaft out first, which is held on by a tiny, tiny snap ring on the back side of this drum. And it's kind of hard to get out, but there's a snap ring right there. There's the groove it goes to on the shaft. And once you get it out, you can get this whole thing pretty much disassembled. Now the 3-5 reverse clutch is a little tough to get the snap ring out of because the pressure plate has a groove that the snap ring kind of goes into. So you kind of got to squeeze it in and then so push the I pressure plate the, uh, down and then you're able to work the snap ring around snap and get it out. You can actually also use a step press like you used to get a retainer off of the inside of a drum to get this thing out. And I'll show you more on it when we're pitting it back together. We got the transmission all apart. Now what is wrong with this thing and why wouldn't it move forward when we were pitting power to it? And it's pretty simple, actually. We just have a set of burnt four, five, six clutches. And I'm not sure what they do in first gear, but obviously it's not allowing the car to move. 
So we also cut the converter apart just to check the clutch because they are problematic in these units and the clutch was completely gone inside the torque converter. So we had a burnt up overdrive clutch, a burnt up torque converter, and no forward movement. And this is a common problem in these things when they just run dry on fluid and people just keep driving them. Now in my next video, we're going to be pitting this transmission back together, going through everything we need to do to make sure it's right, buying everything we need to buy to make sure it's right. We might have to buy a valve body. We might have to buy a torque converter. We might have to buy a huge kit to replace all these clutches. And we might have to buy a few clutch steels as well. So be prepared for that video coming out. And if you do not want to miss it, be sure to subscribe to this channel where I'm posting videos every single week. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook where I try to post content weekly as well. Thanks for watching. And whatever you do, however you do it, make sure you stay dirty, make sure you work hard, and most importantly, make sure you play hard. You can just call me Eddie.